Well, good morning or good afternoon to everybody, depending on where you're at, and thanks for joining us today. My name is Ray Shanahan, and I'm the Director of Sales at CareerServe. I've been in EMS since 1986 and have been fortunate enough to see how technology has advanced the delivery of emergency treatment in the field. The last 30 years have seen hundreds of tech innovations within EMS, auto compression devices, transmitting EKG data to hospitals, and many others aimed at better patient outcomes. What I wanted to share with you today is another milestone in improving patient outcomes through the use of VR training. So I'd like to welcome you to CareerCert VR powered by Health Scholars. For first responders, no two cardiac emergency calls are ever the same. The location's different, the patient's different, and each event is unique in its own manner. And it's critical that your field personnel have a consistent, reliable, hands-on training process that prepares them for any cardiac situation. But delivering frequent training can be a challenge and comes with a high cost. And the 2020 COVID pandemic has certainly exacerbated the challenge of effective in-person training and keeping people safe. Our ACLS VR training provides an immersive, repeatable VR simulation for first responders. The VR simulation can be done whenever, wherever, and how often that it's needed. Your staff doesn't have to come in on their days off, and you don't have to pay overtime or spend time resourcing and orchestrating expensive training days. So let's take a closer look at the benefits of VR. Our career cert VR training provides a learner with a safe environment to hone their ACLS and pediatric assessment skills. Mistakes made here cause no harm, and in truth, sometimes a mistake provides a learning opportunity as well. The immersive environment that VR provides allows for the learner to develop and improve their critical thinking skills, their decision-making skills, and their teamwork skills. It also helps to develop a sense of situational awareness because the VR environment is a complete 360 degree experience. Coupled with an immediate feedback loop, the learner is provided with real-time decision-making and an overall measure of clinical readiness after they complete the training. By virtualizing training, organizations are able to provide ongoing refresher training at scale and for less cost than physical simulation. And the training can also be done 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I thought I'd share a quick illustration of projected cost savings with you. And as you can see, VR offers a significant time and cost savings in addition to being available 24 seven. There's no limit to how many times a learner can complete a different scenario. And in fact, many organizations have started using VR as a skill competency tool in their hiring process in looking how they determine the applicant's level of proficiency. So in the handout box, we've provided several resources that you can download that provide you some more information about the training that we offer. <clears throat> so let's get started. The learners are placed in the role of the team leader running the call inside a patient's residence. Through the use of voice recognition technology, the learner can direct his team to do things such as turning on the lights, moving a piece of furniture, or even performing an intervention. The platform provides 13 different scenarios that reflect both cardiac and non-cardiac arrest scenarios. And this ensures that the learner receives a different experience each time they complete a scenario. This first responder ACLS VR requires a learner to identify different cardiac waveforms and direct his virtual team members to shock, give meds, uh, or perform CPR as necessary, all using voice recognition technology. The scenario plays out in a compressed time frame and normally takes about 18 to 20 minutes to complete. And in that time frame, the learner is challenged to identify and treat several different cardiac and non-cardiac arrest rhythms. And then upon completion, the learner receives immediate feedback on overall performance and readiness. So let's take a look at the learner experience. Mr. Nelson is a 65-year-old man. We received a call that he was dizzy and laid down here. We hooked him up to the biphasic defibrillator and have a bolus of normal saline going. You can see his rhythm and he has a pulse. How should we treat this? Aaron, let's administer adenosine. I'll administer adenosine. Please restate the instruction and include the dosage I should give. 
Okay, uh, Aaron, let's give him six milligrams of adenosine. Giving adenosine six milligrams. <laughs> Whoa. All right, the adenosine is in. All right, looks like that didn't work. Uh, Aaron, let's give him 12 milligrams of adenosine. Giving adenosine 12 milligrams. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Hmm, blood pressure is still holding and his pulse is strong. Should we give atropine? Sir, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Actually, I don't feel bad at all. As you can see in the video, the learner was given immediate feedback from Aaron regarding the dose of adenosine. So let's skip ahead a few minutes and see how the call is progressing. Can you tell us what rhythm this is? This looks like a type one second degree AV block. Right, type one second degree AV block, also called Wenkebach. Since he's asymptomatic, we do not need to intervene emergently. His care team can work up the cause after the procedure. However, if he becomes unstable, we'll give atropine and move to transcutaneous pacing if that doesn't work. He's still bradycardic and hypotensive. Please let us know what this rhythm is before we proceed. Uh, that looks like it's a type 2 third degree AV block. It is a type of AV block, but that's not the right one. Which one is it? That looks like Mobitz. Right, I see. It's type 2, also called Mobitz, second degree AV block. It's highly unstable. So upon completion of this scenario, the learner is provided with immediate feedback related to recognition and treatment of critical rhythms and general managements of the call. Any areas in which the learner has not demonstrated proficiency are identified and noted in what is called a clinical readiness assessment. This readiness assessment is stored in the individual learner's profile and then can be used to highlight areas that that learner requires additional education. And the platform also calculates an overall readiness score for your entire organization and can be used to determine education focus areas. So here's a sample of a readiness report, and it displays overarching readiness for responding to patients with cardiovascular emergencies. The report does drill down to your individual and organization specific proficiencies and uses some complex analytics around behaviors and decisions made during the VR exercise. So when coupled with the career Cert continuing education platform, organizations have the ability to develop education training plans to address any identified readiness deficiencies. So let's move on to a pediatric assessment scenario. The patient is six months old. His respiratory rate is 64 and his capillary refill rate is delayed. Using the words around the triangle, assesses appearance, breathing, and circulation. If you need to remove one of your choices, say correct before the word. For example, if you thought the patient exhibited pallor, then changed your mind, say correct pallor to remove pallor from your choices. You don't have to say all the words. If something isn't applicable to the patient, just skip it. When you're finished, say submit. He has decreased interactivity, abnormal gaze, abnormal cry. He has modeling, pallor, and cyanosis. He has retractions, flaring, gasping, apnea. Submit. Let's take a look at his actual findings. Based on your assessment, say the health state that best correlates with your findings from the list to the right of the triangle. 
Since all three sides of the triangle are lit up, he has cardiopulmonary failure. This assessment demonstrates cardiopulmonary failure. Pediatric emergencies are low frequency, high risk events that present a challenge to even the most seasoned professional. Compared to adults, children have different anatomical and physiological differences that sometimes mask early indicators of severe illness. Consequently, that makes it difficult to recognize. Additionally, resuscitation interventions are age and, and weight dependent. So unless your providers are practicing pediatric assessment frequently, the nuance and critical skill sets needed to assess and treat a child decay over a period of time. In fact, recent studies show that many infrequently used EMS skills begin to decay as early as six months without frequent practice. VR is the ideal training for pediatric assessment triangle, given that real life exposures to pediatric physical findings are highly infrequent. Our VR training recreates the pertinent findings in a real life patient situation and graphically teaches the association of the assessment triangle with life-threatening health conditions. The VR simulation provides a risk-free environment for first responders to practice recognition of severe illness and resuscitation management. First responders can now practice pediatric assessment and care anytime, anywhere, and as often as needed. Here's a short clip on the pediatric assessment VR training. The patient is seven months old. His respiratory rate is normal at 32. So this kid has decreased interactivity, abnormal gaze, and abnormal crying. Skin looks good though, so normal skin. Breathing looks good, so normal breathing. And submit. Let's take a look at his actual findings. Based on your assessment, say the health state that best correlates with your findings from the list to the right of the triangle. So since the only side of the triangle lit up is appearance, this kid has a CNS or metabolic disorder. This assessment suggests a central nervous system or metabolic abnormality. He has an abnormal appearance as he is minimally interactive, has abnormal gaze, and exhibited no crying. He does not show any increased work of breathing and his circulation to skin is normal. Together, this assessment suggests a central nervous system or metabolic abnormality. With a CNS or metabolic emergency, you should maintain the airway, assess pulse oximetry, and provide oxygen as needed. Obtain a rapid glucose measurement and treat hypoglycemia if present. Consider an EKG or cardiac monitor. Obtain vascular access and give fluids as needed. Immobilize the spine if there is potential trauma. The patient is four months old. His respiratory rate is 64. This kid is making grunting sounds, uh, which is abnormal sounds. He has retractions. You can see the sternal notch and the intercostals. He's not tracking me, so he has abnormal gaze and decreased interactivity. abnormal gaze and he's not crying so he has abnormal cry abnormal cry skin looks pretty good don't see any obvious problems with it so he has uh, normal skin Up, oh, he's flaring. Let's 
submit. Let's take a look at his actual findings. Based on your assessment, say the health state that best correlates with your findings from the list to the right of the triangle. So a kid with both appearance and work of breathing problems is in pretty big trouble. He's got respiratory failure. As you saw, the previous video also highlighted the additional challenges of the recognition of signs in different skin tones. Additionally, our pediatric assessment simulation training reenacts the management priorities for each category of illness. And the VR platform also allows the management and measurement of VR simulation, making deliberate practice scalable, repeatable, and affordable, all in a safe, non-threatening environment. First responders can now practice pediatric assessment and care anytime, anywhere, and as often as needed. What we have shared with you today is just a small glimpse of our VR offering, and we would love the opportunity to show you a more in-depth look at how VR can improve your patient outcomes. Thank you for joining us today. I really appreciate this opportunity to talk to you about our new training technologies that improve patient outcomes. And thank you again for connecting it with us today. And thank you for the sacrifice that you all make to make our community a safer place. So please stay safe and take care.